Marcellus, you up first because it's time for you to defend Joe squad. Mm. Is the Clippers series over? I want to defend them dudes. They can't defend Luca. Why the hell I got to defend them? Okay. <laughs> Woo! All right, y'all know me, man. I, I got to keep it 100. Hey, Paul, PG, let me talk to you, homeboy. There's some levels of concern here. <laughs> we got some real issues right here. So every time I'm in a building, especially when I was growing up, I had a, a, in our apartment building, we had this little fire extinguisher. And it said, I remember being a little kid, seven years old or stuff, in case of emergency, break, break glass. glass. And every day I would walk home like, it ain't no emergency, but damn, I want to just break that glass. But then I was like, I don't even know how to work a fire extinguisher. It's a little more complicated than y'all think. You got to pull the pin out and get all that stuff. So anyway, so I'm sitting there like, damn. I want to break this glass, but there's no emergency. Well, PG, right now my Clippers down 0-2, and we got to go to Dallas. Psh, I'm about to break that glass because this is an emergency. What the hell is going on with us switching, allowing Luka Doncic to pick Pat Beverly, our best little defender, and, or pick Reggie Jackson say, come here, come here. Overwrite junior high school layup drills. Every single damn time he is taking them to the basket. Okay. So now we got to come out with a reconfiguration. We got to just switch up our lineup. They are going power because we're trying to go speed, finesse, and quickness. Okay. We know that they're going to counter, but we need to go big. We need to go out there and show our power because we do have some great defenders. But unfortunately, when we see PB or we see Reggie Jackson out there, Luca is licking his chops. Let me say this about our situation right now because you know me. Clippers fan, I'm always going to root no matter what. I'm not defeated right now, but my energy is actually beat up. It's actually like, yo, I think this is over because I'm a fat. I'm a fat man. I'm looking at these nuggets that tell me of 318 different series where teams have gone down 0-2. <laughs> I don't even want to read this. <laughs> Only 21 have won. Y'all can't do math, me either. 6.6%. So we got a 6.6% .6 chance, and I'm not going to tell you what it really is, 666. Our damn, the devil. <laughs> it's over. It's over. Basically, we got a 666 devil's chance of winning this series. But I'm rooting, but it ain't looking pretty. Oh, man, when you need the devil's advocate, where is he? <laughs> um, it's over, big dog. Oh! But it's been over, Cell. And, and here's when I knew over. it was over. Slick Rick, you're going to like oh, this God, one. After game one, the Mavericks had lost. And Marce Mar Mavericks had won. The Clippers had lost after game mm -hmm. one. And okay. Marcellus came to me and he said, you know, I was talking to my dog, Richard Jefferson, after the game. And oh, Richard Jefferson, myself, some of the players, they all told me this, Acho. You know, and they're astute basketball <laughs> analysts, you know, unlike yourself. And they all told me this, Acho. They said the Mavericks, they God. was just hitting too many shots. And as soon as the real game Game comes around game two, yeah. it's going to be all Clippers, baby. I sat there, I nodded. You know, I'm humble at times, at times. At times. I sat there, I nodded. And Slick Rick, I thought to myself, if you ever have to bank on someone else's failure for Ooh. you to succeed, that's not true success. Ooh. That's when I knew the series was over. Marcellus, Richard Jefferson, none of the likes said, oh, the Clippers, they going to be in their bag. They're going to improve X, Y, and Z. Mm. No. The ideology for the Clippers after game one was, the Mavs are just going to get worse. Imagine going Ooh. to a race against Usain Bolt and saying, well, Usain is just going to stumble out the blocks. Imagine going to a game against Tom Brady and saying, well, Tom Brady is just going to happen to get hurt. Imagine going into a game against the Dallas Mavericks who shot 47% from three after game one and saying, oh, they're just going to get worse. What if they don't? Because oh. game two, they shot 53% from three. What if they don't? So I knew the series was over officially after game one when Clippers fans and NBA analysts, their ideology for the Clippers winning wasn't that the Clippers were going to improve, but very simply, the Mavericks are going to get worse. Well, Luka ain't getting no worse. Tim Hardaway Jr. ain't getting no worse. Vinny Smith ain't getting no worse. Nobody got worse. The Mavericks are just a better team, oh. playing better, and they're going to get worse. better. Stop. Series over. Stop. That wasn't my ideology coming out of game one. I thought the Clippers, uh, having shot 41%, best in the league all year from three, were going to shoot better in game two, and that would be the difference because that game one was there for the taking <clears throat> right to the final minutes. So that wasn't my ideology. But, and so having said that, going into game two, I would have said, no, this is not over. In fact, even after game two, 
I would have said, this isn't over until I heard Paul George speak. Mm. Now I know it's over. Mm. Because number mm. one, I heard Paul mm. George speak. Mm. I don't need to hear from the assistant at this I point. This. I need to hear from the leader. And I certainly don't need to hear that you're down 0-2. And as Marcellus aptly pointed out, the percentage is there. Sure. There's no concern. Yeah. What? When are you going to get concerned? Never mind <laughs> winning this series. I thought it was all about winning a championship. So uh, the, the mentality there, look, this has always been the question that we've had with the Clippers, the soft underbelly mentality mm. that we even heard from PG last year after the fact that, well, I didn't expect us to win a championship this year anyway. What? 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 That, that's the mindset going in here. And, and if we don't rise to the occasion, then we're going to lose. If, if we don't rise to the occasion, that allows the possibility and the belief that there's a chance we might not rise to the occasion. Championship teams, teams that win series, teams that live up to their abilities have none of that thinking and none of that leadership. Ooh. And it really points to where you can look on paper, you can look at the percentages, as I have, and I've said, Clippers have everything they need. They can do everything they need to do. So why don't they do it? Because there's no concern. There's Damn. no worry Damn. that if they don't, they're not going to get the prize that they're after. Damn. It's hard to cook with no fire. Mm. <laughs> ah, slick, you broke that down right there. And I, I, ugh, I still am rooting. I still believe, but I do feel a little John Coffee up here, a little Green Mile, like I'm walking to my death, like, damn it, oh, yeah, it's over. Um, but it's not over. And, Paul George, you didn't give me much to be encouraged about because I hate when people got to lie. Like, it's okay to address, yo, I'm concerned. Oh, yeah, uh, this is a problem. But we still can overcome this adversity, overcome this problem. So I'm going to go on record and still say it. Clippers in six. We know this. I mean, Clippers are still going to win this damn series. Let me tell you how they're going to win this series. Right now, we're looking at Kawhi Leonard down 2-0. I wonder God when the bless last you, time... Marcellus. I know, That's all right? I can say right. is God you bless ready? you. I wonder when the last time Kawhi Leonard was down 0-2 in the series. Oh, was that with the Raptors? What happened? He came back and won 4-2 that series. Raptors in six, Clippers in six. Stop it. Because no one, no one predicted that Toronto team to be as good as they are. Let me tell you why else. Because I'm not going to root for Dallas to fail. I'm just rooting for Dallas to be Dallas. Right now, I don't know what the hell they are. And I don't know where you're going. What you climbing you're right reaching. now, Slick Rick? I know, I, I know I am. But let me keep reaching, I'm climbing it. whatever you're climbing, hey. brother. I'm holding on to that same rope. Hey, I told him to give me the extra baggy suit today because I needed the room to reach. <laughs> let me keep it going. Mavericks, 18th in the league in three-point percentage, right? What they shooting right now in this series? 50%. I'm not rooting for the downfall, but sooner or later, they're going to come back down to planet Earth. So if you look at this, the Mavs, haven't had three straight games of shooting over 45%. You think they're going to go home and do it again? Ooh, that's not what Vegas would bet on. I look at it all around. We've underperformed, and that's okay, because down 0-2, we've seen the leader of our team climb out of that hole before, and we're going to need him to do it again. If not, John Coffey about to get lit up. Sal, I know you've been in a situation during your playing days where you gave somebody your best speed to power bull rush. Now, Slick Rick, <laughs> speed to power bull rush, you take about three hard steps up the field, you plant on that outside leg, you come in either with one long arm into the chest or you take two, you headbutt and you button press. That's just your standard speed to power bull rush. But I know this. Marcellus has once upon a time come with his best speed to power bull rush, and the offensive lineman just sat there like this. Straight face. Do you want the story? Straight, straight face. Just didn't even flinch. Marcellus gave his best punch of power, and the offensive lineman just didn't. Is that all you got? That's what happened with the Clippers last night. Kawhi Leonard, 30 points in the first half. He gave his best speed to power, <laughs> outside leg, long arm, and the Mavs were looking down 71 73. Like, that's it. That's all you got. 30 points. That's the second most points See, you've I ever scored in your career. I don't honestly career. believe that's that. Because offensively, maybe they gave them their best shot.
But defensively, they did not yeah, they get slick. Any slick. Yeah, they have been here's master why I know. Of the first here, effort. Here's why I know slick because at this point in time. You can look at a 12-game sample size. You can go back from the Clippers versus Luka in the playoffs last year all through the regular season this year to the games right now. Or we can just look at the playoffs, Slick. Luka versus the Clippers, 42-28. He got hurt. 43, 22, 38, 31, Ooh. 39. Ooh. Eventually, we have to concede to the fact that the Clippers are just not as good defensively against this Dallas Mavericks team as we believe. Styles make fights, and it's not a great stylistic matchup versus the Clip versus these Dallas Mavericks. No, 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 At least but... not versus Luka. I, well, and that's the point. Are they going to stop Luka? No. Luka is going to get his. But you can't tell me that the complementary players of this Clippers team Thank you. cannot shut down the complementary players of the Dallas Mavericks. And I only wish that the Clippers had someone like Marcellus in their locker room playing on that team that would create the belief that, look, this is how we get it done. I don't care what we've done. I don't care what mm. the numbers say. Mm. This is how we're going to get it done. And I am not hearing that nope. from anyone. That is my great concern. So, look, I, I, <sighs> this is just the sad aspect of, of where the Clippers are in that Kawhi Leonard needs to be your leader. He needs to step up defensively and say, I've got this because he is the most accomplished defensive player. Having Paul George and Pat Bev switch off on Luka Doncic I, I just that Ugh. the message it sends Ugh. is we're gonna find a way to get by, but I'm not gonna do but everything Kawhi I ain't possibly even got can it. Slick. to impact Slick. this team. Can we establish, and, and, please? And, and without it, you're not going to Slick. get past the Dallas. Can we establish, please, that Kawhi is not the defender we believe him to be? Oh no, we ain't gonna Luka. do that on here. Against Luca, no. even when Kawhi was against no. Luca, and I rewatched it this morning to know? make sure it was. Flesh. How do we know he never takes that assignment? He tried. And Luca still gave him buckets, went three for seven, hit two threes, and uh, uh, hit a field goal in his eye. Moving off from his right to his left foot in his eye. Both them uh, cuticles, corneas, whatever they are. <laughs> cuticles. Slick. We got to stop making these Here's assumptions. Oh, if you just put Kawhi. Marcellus said it yesterday. And don't worry, I got the tape. Marcellus said it yesterday. Just put Kawhi on him and you go hold him to under 23 points. I said the whole game. They put no, Kawhi no, no, no. on him and Kawhi no, no, still no, no. I'm not suggesting buckets. that. I'm not suggesting that. I'm not suggesting that, that, that suggest? Kawhi Leonard would lock suggest? down Luka Doncic. What I'm talking about, and I've been talking about since the beginning of this segment, is the message being sent. The urgency, first of all, we're not hearing urgency. There's no concern. Mm. And we're hearing it from the assistant. Two, the Kawhi assistant. Leonard taking on ah. Luka Doncic doesn't mean he's going to stop Luka Doncic. It sends the message to the rest of the team, we are going to do everything possible. I am going to do everything possible to, to win this series. I am going to the, do the dirty work. I'm not going to worry about scoring. We need to slow down the Dallas Mavericks. The scoring will take care of itself. And what I saw in game one and I saw in game two was they were hanging around in both games. We can get our shots. We can score when we want. We can drive to the cup and finish. We're, we'll eventually, we'll just, we'll win. We'll, we'll have more firepower and they weren't doing the dirty work at the other end. And my biggest problem is that if it takes you two games in order to sound the alarm and say we have to do the dirty work, then at some point you're going to win a game or two and you're going to kick back again and say, okay, did we do the dirty work? Are we good? And that's how you end up losing a series to a team that is not as talented as you are. Man, God damn. Is, I got a list of uh, five, six quick nuggets uh, Slick Rick, you really impressed me on this one because you went to the core of the issue. It's just we don't have enough fire to really light up what we need to cook. It's just that simple. I, uh, my first issue is Tim Hardaway Sr. for having that damn son. <laughs> <laughs> just can't miss a damn shot right now. Tim Hardaway Jr., salute. Good Lord. Keep it up, but I don't know if you can. We'll see because I'm a Clipper lover. Two. Only one other player was in double figures, and that's Reggie Jackson, who becomes a liability when Lucas says, hey, come here, Reggie, defend me. That's not going to happen as well. We got to figure that out in terms of lineup. Three, five of the top seven scorers in this series are on the Dallas Mavericks. We can't have that. Four, what you talked about, Slick, Kawhi. He's a lead-by-example type, and I'm not going to slight 
Kawhi because of his personality. But then that makes us, by default, have to look at Paul George. Paul George, you got to stop lying. Like, you can't talk to the masses and talk to the group without authenticity. If you come up there saying, we ain't concerned, <laughs> I'm sitting in there in the back of the locker room like, boy, I don't know what he's talking about. I am concerned as hell. Five, I'll try, I need to see you on screen because you called me out. Speed to power, Walter Jones, Seattle. Oh, my God. <laughs> Walter Jones is the best offensive lineman that ever existed. Okay, I tried to do my speed to power. He giggled at it. Like, he didn't move <laughs> at all. Matt Hasselback sitting back there building real estate and portfolios and stuff, not getting touched. So then I said, I'm going to sucker him. Speed to power inside move instead of just go through the bull rush. I did it, and I beat him. Acho, you know what happened? I beat him, turned him around in a full revolution. He's so damn fast and strong, still recovered, pushed me off, and I ain't getting nothing but dirt naps. Oh, my <laughs> God, Mo. Salute Walter Jones. Clips in six.